Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a Toyota RAV4 2011 four wheel drive, very clean car, 97,000 miles. Uh, customer drove it about two hours away, and her complaint is it vibrates and almost stalls when she's pressing the brake at a stoplight at idle. Kind of a weird customer complaint, so let's dive into it, do a code scan, see if we can reproduce the fault, and take it from there. Alright, let's first read the customer complaint here. Two separate vibration issues, one such as from bad engine transaxle mounts, Second one is when idling or coming to a complete stop with the brake pedal depressed, idle drops as if the stall misfire vibration becomes intermittent as long as brake pedal is depressed. If e-brake is used instead of brake pedal depressed, no vibration, low idle or misfire. Once brake pedal is depressed, the problem manifests. No change if in drive or neutral, no codes present, suspect power brake booster, vacuum hose circuit for booster. Okay, code scan, clean bill of health. So, so um, let's dive under the hood, do a quick visual, check the fluids, start this thing up, see if uh, there's anything weird. And this thing looks mint underneath and in the engine bay, like a brand new car. Let's just double check the fluids. Oil is full, coolant is full. There's our brake booster, everything looks brand new. There's the vacuum line going down to the intake manifold. Yeah, let's fire it up. So before we fire this thing up, let me back out. Just go into basic OBD2 data, and we'll look at fuel trims, throttle position. If there's a problem with, you know, vacuum leak when you're pressing on the brakes, that should jack up the fuel trims. And I want to see that on live data. Now we don't have any codes, so I assume the problem isn't that large engine RPM coolant temp equivalence ratio and we'll do short term trim long term trim maybe mass airflow where's that airflow right there and that oxygen sensor Relative throttle position, how about that? All right, here we go, let's fire it up. So Lambda is reading, we're correcting. There's a short term trim. Let me press the brake. No difference on the brake. Put it in gear. She has the e-brake set. I mean, it seems to run fine. Fuel trims are fine. Perfect, with or without the brake depressed. So I don't suspect a vacuum leak at all. Let's let it warm up, take it for a spin around the block, see once the idle comes down, maybe a, the owner said it almost wants to stall, could it be a dirty throttle body perhaps, um, but we'll, we should be, figured that, be able to figure that out fairly quickly. We're cruising along here, almost fully warmed up, accelerates just fine, drives just fine like a brand new car. Go for a few miles and come to a stop sign. All right, we're here at the intersection. Look at the live data, about 760 RPM. Nothing abnormal whatsoever at all. So, absolute throttle position is 15.6%. 
I don't know what to say here. Fuel trims are perfect, nothing abnormal. Okay, so we're fully warmed up. The RPMs are now at 650. We're in park, 14.5% on the throttle. So if I step on the brake, nothing changes at all. See the short term fuel trim just bumps up a little bit. That's normal. Just to replenish the vacuum in the brake booster. About two grams per second on the mass airflow. Let's put it in gear. Throttle bumps up a little bit to 14.9. So engine RPMs are about 600. That's getting a little low. Let's turn on some loads. So you see the throttle went up a bit to 15.6. Turn on the AC. Sixteen. So now we're using almost four grams per second with the loads on. Still maintaining fourteen volts. So AC off, fan off, lights off. Okay, so the RPMs do drop to about six hundred, which I think is slightly low. This must be what the customer's talking about. With no loads. So under 600 RPM, that's a little low. So it's not misfiring, it's not ready to stall out, but it does feel a little shaky because a four cylinder engine idling below 600 RPM, you'll feel the the actual pulses of the cylinders, you know. So what we can try to do is clean the throttle body, see if that bumps up the RPMs a little bit. There's no idle relearn procedure or anything like that. So customer complaint reproduced when it's fully warmed up and the RPMs do drop below 600. In gear, if we put it in park, What do the RPMs drop to in park? About 650. Below 600. In gear, neutral, okay, so we've seen this exact symptom before at least on two or three other Toyota products. Think of 2014 Camry. 2014 Lexus, and what else? Anyways, dragging torque converter. On this drivetrain, the 2.5, they use the updated transmission where you can't check the fluid level, there's no dipstick. And these torque converters like to start grabbing a little too much at idle. Dragging. That will cause these exact symptoms because the computer is only programmed to bump up the throttle a little bit assuming that the converter is going to drag a certain amount. If it drags too much, yeah, it'll be a little too much load and the throttle won't compensate for that. So what we could suggest is fluid flush on the transmission, but if it, that doesn't take care of it, it's going to need a torque converter eventually. Right now it's not bad, but that's the diagnosis for this Toyota RAV4 slightly dragging torque converter, you know, too much uh, compared to when it was new. That's that's definitely the issue here. So let's put it in gear again one more time. See the throttle does bump up a little bit.
And it does not matter if your foot's on the brake or not. Well, actually, let's see, foot on the brake. The throttle does drop down a little bit when your foot's on the brake. Okay, customer complaint reproduced. Foot off the brake. See the throttle bumps up a little bit. And we're up to 750 RPM. Foot on the brake. 580, 600. Okay, so definitely customer complaint reproduced. So what I'm noticing is, you know, this is the happy state here. 15.3% on the throttle, about 720 RPM. We're in gear. It doesn't matter if the brake is pressed or not. However, if you turn the lights off, look what happens. 14.5, we drop to 570 RPM. This is a nice screenshot, and if I let go of the brake, it bumps it back up to 15, whatever, 15 and a half, 15.3. crazy right if I turn the lights on 15.3 put it in park so 14.5 lights off so 14.5 14.5 so it doesn't bump up the throttle when you're in gear with the lights off and the brake depressed is that a programming issue it could be well, let's clean the throttle body see if that makes any difference well here's the throttle body looks absolutely mint someone already cleaned it this is why the customer drove two hours to get here because someone already did the low hanging fruit and that didn't fix the problem so in this case I think it's going to be a programming issue you know why does the computer bump the throttle down when the accessories are off and you're in gear and your foot's on the brake um, well let me just wipe it wipe it down just so we're definitely 100% clean on the throttle body but that's not going to be the issue alright well we've done all we can do Customer complaint is definitely present. Um, I looked at TSBs, nothing of interest. Uh, it's, a, it's a programming issue. For some reason, when the headlights are off and the brake is pushed, the throttle closes just a little bit too much and the RPM drops below 600, which I don't think it should. What's the solution? Well, how about you just turn your headlights on? Or go to the dealer and get your ECM reprogrammed which may or may not fix the issue so you know was this problem gradually getting worse as the car aged it's uh, what 13 years old not too many miles on it but as stuff you know kind of wears and changes a little bit the computer should be able to compensate for this so it, that's what I'm saying it's a programming issue Shouldn't the desired idle be 650, not 580? It should be a feedback loop. For some reason, on these Toyotas, they they don't do it that way. There's no idle relearn, you know, command or anything like that. So here we are. This is a uh, it's happy spot. 740 RPM, 0 0.78 on the throttle. If I turn the headlights off, that's all I'm doing. Headlights off. Look what happens. RPMs dip below 600, and we're at 0 0.74 on the TPS. And you can see the camera's shaking. That's the customer complaint. It's not a misfire, it's just idle speed is a little bit too low. To put it in neutral. I'll keep the brake depressed. Okay, it's about 640. 
0 0.72 in the throttle, put it in gear. I think it should bump up the throttle a little more than whatever, 2 0.02 volts. But headlights on, no vibration. Seven hundred forty RPM, no issues. So that's going to be my recommendation to the customer: just drive around with your headlights on. That's safer to begin with. You have no vibration. Now stop signs, problem solved, right? I think that's all we can do here. So that's the end of this diagnosis. Didn't really repair anything, but we found a solution to the problem. If you want to make it like new, I would say reprogram the engine computer. Maybe there's an update, but I couldn't find a TSB on it, so I can't guarantee that would work. So that's how it goes sometimes. The car's not really broken. It's just the annoyance, slight annoyance, which can easily be corrected by turning on an electrical load. Okay? So, then let's make sure that the alarm works. So if we shut the car off and the headlights are still on, Will it ding at you? No? There's no headlight reminder, there's just a little indicator. Headlights don't turn on or turn off on their own. That's kind of silly. You can leave your lights on like that. Mm, not smart, Toyota. All right, well, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. All right, so there goes the RAV4 with the low idle vibration complaint. And I talked to the owner's husband, and guess what? This problem started when he installed LED headlight bulbs, because I guess the lenses are all foggy, so they tried to compensate with bright LED bulbs, and the car originally had daytime running lights. He disabled those. Bingo, now the engine computer sees a lower load, and drops the uh, RPMs down, boom. <laughs> so the problem started when they installed LED bulbs, but they didn't put two and two together there, that the load sensed by the engine computer can have a dramatic effect on idle quality. So either just change out the bulbs to OEM, just restore it back to stock, uh, maybe get new headlight lenses so you can you know, the owner can see better at night. So that makes me feel better. We're spot on with the diagnosis using scan data. No parts required. Um, and again, non-OE parts can introduce weird variables. We've seen this before. Um, especially on Toyotas recently, I've noticed. Ignition coils, headlight bulbs, you name it. Um, unintended consequences. So that's it for that one. Uh, pretty interesting conclusion. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.